man who broke the news. The great Adam Schefter joins us now here on ESPN Wisconsin. Chef, do you appreciate the time? Uh, obviously, this is uh, this is the market we live in now. Four years, two hundred twenty million dollars for Jordan Love. It took a little bit, but they got it done. Let's start with just your reaction to the news, Shefty. Exactly what we expected it to be, almost on the timeline we expected it to be. Before the first padded practice today, Packers wanted to get him out there. You knew it wasn't going to be cheap. I mean, we had said, uh, you tell me, Gabe, did we not say that he was going to be one of the, if not the highest paid quarterbacks in football? Wasn't that the line we kept saying over and over? Yeah, it is the one we kept saying over and over. Absolutely. And so, and what did it turn out to be? He is one of the, if not the, depending on how you look at it, the highest paid quarterback Mm -hmm. in football, right? So, you know, what's interesting to me is that it's a four-year contract. And so that the Green Bay Packers went on a shorter deal where many of the other quarterback extensions that were done are five-year deals. So that means that when Jordan Love is 30 years old in 2028, he will have a chance to become a free agent again, if that's what he opts to do. So he has crushed it now, and he'll have the ability, if he plays well, to really do very well again five years from now after he plays out this contract. So, again, a a big win for Jordan Love. And and the Green Bay Packers are in a situation where they they don't have to pay right now a wide receiver the top dollars, the tight end the top dollars. They have an opportunity here, even though they have to pay Jordan Love, uh, to be able to pay him that and, and still build a young, offensive, talented team and make a run. And that's what they've done here. And let's see how it works out. Clearly, the Packers said, I mean, Brian Gutekunst had said publicly he wanted to get a deal done before training camp. That wasn't the case. What do you think ultimately the holdup was? Because like you just said, Adam, this ended up kind of being exactly what we thought it was going to be. Yeah. The only thing I can tell you is they're probably haggling over the four or five years. I'm, I'm sure that was an issue because I can't imagine that the Green Bay Packers were thrilled about four years. But in the end, they did that. Um, you know, Jordan Love had wins here. And the Packers got their win in that he's under contract for five more years. Uh, He's a guy that they built around. And so, look, here's the deal. These deals get done sort of when they have to. And with the Packers having their first padded practice today, they wanted him out there today. And so whatever that last little hang-up was, and I I, I don't know what that was. My my guess is um, obviously you're, you're haggling over the money um, whether the, it's the actual guarantee in the end or the average coming up a little bit, whatever it is, um, both sides got in the end what they wanted, but I don't know that final oil obstacle, why it got done last night as opposed to, say, Monday night. Probably just the time and urgency of the situation, to be frank. ESPN senior NFL insider Adam Schefter with us here on ESPN Wisconsin reacting to the historic deal for Packers quarterback Jordan Love. Four years, $220 million. Schefter, we've talked a lot this morning about expectations, what this does, right? When you look at the deal, the guys he's with, Joe Burrow, who played in the Super Bowl, Trevor Lawrence, the former number one overall pick. When you pay a guy this much money, what does that do for the expectations for Jordan Love? Yeah, I, I don't know that it changes it drastically. Like, here's a team that traded up to get this guy. Here's a team that traded Aaron Rodgers to make room for this guy. There there were always some form of expectations for him. He was always expected to be able to do something significant and special, right? And so in this particular case, this is just – the next step in that development, in that progression to where now the money's come. So, so do, you, do you think there's that much more pressure in the NFL playing quarterback because you got a contract? <laughs> like, you don't think there's been pressure on Jordan Love all along when they drafted him, when they traded up to get him, when they traded at Like, this is what he's battled all, all his career here. So it's just another layer of it. But I don't think it's anything drastically different than the pressure that he's overcome before. It's, in an, my it's, mind. it's an interesting way to put it, though, right? Like, I guess I haven't viewed it that way. Uh, it, it, but it's a, it's a good point by you. But, uh, uh, again, 
has he not played the toughest position in sports for a rabid <laughs> excuse me for a rabid fan base like yeah. oh so, so there was no pressure then <laughs> there was no pressure when they traded up to get him. There was no pressure when he came in. There's no pressure when pe- people are wondering why they took him in, as opposed to drafting yeah. a wide receiver. No pressure. No pressure <laughs> when they traded Aaron Rodgers, and, you know, one of the great players in NFL history, to make room for him. Like, okay, yeah. So they gave him this big contract. Okay. Yeah, we knew it was coming. You knew it was going to happen. Okay. So there's more pressure on that position. More. I don't know how that is, but okay. I mean, I understand it, it's just another level of thought process, but I don't, I don't think that's the way that many top athletes think. So the question now becomes, Shefty, how long before this contract seems like a deal? Because I remember everybody freaking yeah. out about the 10-year, $450 million contract that Patrick Mahomes signed, right. and now in an right. annual average value basis, he's not even in the top 10 of NFL quarterbacks right. So how long right. before it seems like this contract's almost a steal? Well, uh, what I would say is the market will start to turn presumably next offseason when Dak Prescott resets the market, when Brock Purdy, I would think, passes up these deals. And there will be two deals right then and there that get done. And then at some point in time when Patrick Mahomes sees all these deals and he's going to redo his deal, Josh Allen's going to redo his deal, someone's going to win the Super Bowl and want to redo his deal. So it's just the natural progression of things you'll start to see this deal already slide back next off season. And then the next off season will slide back a little bit more and then a little bit more. And by the time we get into the fourth year of the deal, depending on how well Jordan Love is playing, the money that is being spent in this particular will either be a huge value or it'll be a massive overspend, Uh but that'll be contingent on his play, not the numbers. So, um, We'll see how that plays out in the years to come, but th- th- that's how it works with contracts at every position. You know, the, the next wave of players at that spot get paid, and they beat the marks that are established in front of them if they are warranted and worthy, and then we go on to the next deal. That's how it works. That's how it works. ESPN NFL insider Adam Schefter with us here. Gabe Knights and Alex Strofe on ESPN Wisconsin for a few more minutes. Schefter, you tweeted it yesterday that the 2020 NFL draft class for quarterbacks, Burrow, Tungavailoa, Herbert, Love, and Hurts, have, have a combined now $1.25 billion. That's a B, yeah. billion dollars yeah. in contracts. Are, are we going to view this as one of the great quarterback draft classes 2020, or is this just what the market is when you when you get your guy, you pay him, and, and that's just what the market is now that we're up to $1.25 billion? Right. right. I think it's a little bit of both right now. Obviously, you're talking about huge numbers, and you're talking about more money than any quarterback draft class ever is made, but uh, this, this quarterback draft class also is going to have to win some playoff games and Super Bowls before we start putting it into that category. How many Super Bowls has this draft class won so far? Uh, That would be a total of zero. Okay. So until they start winning multiple Super Bowls, it's hard to talk about them with the Jim Kelly, John Elway uh, draft class of 1983, Dan Marino, Ken O'Brien, Tony Eason, now, I know that draft class uh, won only two Super Bowls, I guess, and mm-hmm. that would be from John Elway. But it again, we're still talking multiple, multiple Super Bowls. This one, this class has zero right now. This class right now will make more money than any other quarterback draft class. But you know what? This past quarterback draft class, <laughs> this past year that just happened in April, yeah. if those guys play well, they'll set that record. So that's a function of the market, but the function of whether or not it's one of the great quarterback draft classes is the function of productivity and championship play in the postseason. Okay, well, you say that. Uh, let's talk about the five quarterbacks in the 2020 NFL draft class. In your, in your opinion, Adam Schefter, which of these teams has the best chance to win a Super Bowl next? Is it the Bengals, the Chargers, the Dolphins, the Eagles, or the Packers? Well, that's not just a quarterback question. That's an organizational team-wide sure. question. And I think if we were to look at that right now, uh, you could make an argument. I can make an argument for a few of those teams. Would you be surprised 
if the Packers or Eagles won the Super Bowl this year? I wouldn't be. Doesn't mean they will, but I do believe that they're good enough to contend and compete for that. Would you be surprised if the Bengals or Dolphins did? Uh, I would think that they'll have a chance to compete for it. Again, so much has to go right. Your quarterback has to play well. But a lot of these quarterbacks are in good positions. And, and honestly, they're so early in their careers that there's still so much work to be done and so much history to write and so much that is left ahead of them that it, it's hard to uh, define their legacies four seasons into their career. Like, it's just way too early, way too early. By the way, you could tape this and play it back five years from now, six years from now. Our view of these guys, the way they are today, and the trajectories of their careers will be different in six years. Some of them will exceed what we expect. Some of them will disappoint from what we expect. And I don't know how that's going to go. They don't know how that's going to go. We don't know. But that's the nature of a career. It's a, it's a long journey. And there are ups and downs and stops and starts. And obviously the best ones perform at the highest levels over an extended period. That is the challenge for each of these men. And that is what each of these teams is investing in, thinking and believing that they have the guy to do it. And some of them do. And a couple of them will probably be wrong.